Hey everyone, it's Molly from The Feed Feed, and excuse the gloves, but we are talking all about turkey today. We're gonna to be making a dry brine spatchcock turkey, and once you try it this way, you will truly never go back to the like traditional Norman Rockwell overcooked bird, okay? This is like the best way to do it, and it could not be easier. So before we start dealing with our turkey, let's talk a little bit about brine, and like brining in general, what it is, how it works. I'm not a scientist, but my very loose understanding of it is that um, with a wet brine, you are physically adding moisture to the bird. So you're soaking it in a solution of water or maybe buttermilk, or I've seen people do like apple cider and salt, and that will physically penetrate the flesh of the turkey and kind of plump it up with liquid. So in theory, that's great, right? Because you have a very juicy bird but you also have this sort of like strange texture that almost to me kind of tastes like underdone and it has like a weird, it's not for me. <laughs> Without going too far into it, it's just not for me. I much prefer a dry brine, which works a little bit differently. So with a dry brine, you heavily salt your bird in advance. So it's very simple, a couple ingredients, Actually, you could really just use kosher salt if that's all you had, that totally works. Um, you heavily salt your bird and it sits in the fridge for about two days. And as it sits, the salt will start to penetrate the muscle fibers of the turkey and break some of that down, resulting in a super tender bird and a more flavorful final product. Okay, so our dry brine, very simple. I have kosher salt. I have a little bit of granulated sugar, lemon, pepper. You could also use black pepper, some ground sage, and some dried rosemary. So we're just going to stir this all up. Super easy. Let's just set this aside while we tackle our turkey. Okay, so we have our turkey here. This is about a 12 pound bird, which is I think the perfect size. Spatchcock sounds like a fancy word, but all we're doing is just cutting the backbone out so that we can flatten it out. And the reason that we wanna do that is because turkey breast, the white meat, cooks way faster than the leg meat and the thigh meat. But when you put it in a roasting pan, basically, when you put it in a roasting pan whole, basically this white breast meat is totally exposed. So that not only cooks faster, but it's getting like the most direct heat. And then these poor little legs are kind of shielded by the sides of the pan. They're not getting any love. And so by the time your leg meat is cooked through, your breast meat is totally dried out. So we are going to solve that problem by laying it flat in one even layer so that it can cook nice and evenly. We're gonna dry this bird off just so I have a good grip. And he is a good quality pair of kitchen shears. So make sure you're working with something sharp and you're going to find the backbone. So it starts right about here and you're just gonna start cutting through. Now you might get hung up a little bit. Just gotta apply a little bit of elbow grease. And if this is something that you're watching right now and you're like, heck no, I'm not doing that, you can totally just ask your butcher to do it for you. But they'll probably charge you and like, it's super easy. Okay, so one side is free and now we're just gonna cut down the other side. But actually wet brine versus dry brine, like I kind of said that I prefer dry brine for a number of reasons, but another huge reason is that to wet brine a bird this size, you have to have a giant bucket that also has to remain cold. So like that is not an equation that works in my kitchen. Like my fridge is just not big enough. Um, I don't have a garage fridge. If you do, 
congratulations, <laughs> that is life goals, but I don't have one. So this just takes up way less space. Okay, so our backbone is free. This is Thanksgiving gold though. Don't throw this out. You can chop it up, you can brown it, make some stock. Um, you could even throw it into the roasting pan when you eventually cook this. Okay, so the last step before we fully flatten out our bird is take a paring knife and kind of score this keel bone, which is like the breast bone. And then when we flip it over, you're gonna use a lot of force, break that and flatten it. All this fat that you kind of have hanging about, you can just trim off too. So now you can see it's nice and flat. The only thing I'm gonna do is tuck these wings right behind the breast. So we have this very neat little package. It's good to go. So let's brine it up. Okay, so we're just going to season this up. So you just wanna get kind of up, I don't know, a foot. It's like your salt bay moment. There is actually a reasoning behind that because if you get really close like this, you're gonna have uneven patches of seasoning. But I do like to kind of get under the breast and get some of the brine in there as well. Okay, so I seasoned both sides. I'm gonna put it on a sheet pan lined with um, a baking rack. And the reason for that is that as this sits and brines, some of the moisture is gonna get pulled out and you're gonna wind up with some drippings. We just don't want the turkey sitting in that. As it brines in the fridge, we're gonna not cover it, which is gonna really dry out the skin and give us that beautiful golden brown exterior that we're looking for. So this will sit in the fridge for about 48 hours before we cook it. Okay, so our turkey has been brining for about two days. It's chilling. Well, it's coming to room temperature right now, hanging out. And I'm just gonna prepare a little bit of mirepoix for the bottom of our pan. It's gonna flavor our drippings. You can see I have carrots. I'm not even bothering to peel them. I just rinse them off. We're really just adding these for flavor. So a rough chop is fine. Spread these out evenly. Have a little bit of celery. onion. Okay, these look great. And then just a couple sprigs of fresh thyme, because you can't have a Thanksgiving turkey without a little thyme. And now let's grab our bird. Okay, so you can see when we put the brine on earlier, it was sort of like sitting right on the surface. It looked like a crazy amount of salt. And you can see now that it's all basically been absorbed. So again, that salt, it's gonna break down the muscle fibers. It's going to add a lot of flavor throughout the entire bird. And, and it's gonna make the best Thanksgiving bird you've ever had. So I just have a little bit of bounty, some paper towels. I'm going to blot the skin to get as much moisture off as possible because we're going for that super crisp golden brown skin. And I'm going to transfer this whole rack right over to our new tray with aromatics. Okay, so the last thing we need to do before we get this into the oven is uh, some canola oil. This is just gonna help with that even browning of the skin, make it really nice and crisp. You just wanna give this a massage and make sure all the skin is coated in a thin layer of canola oil. So we're using canola because we're roasting this at high heat. We're roasting it at 450, so we need something with a high smoke point. Butter, obviously, if you're doing like a traditional bird that's roasting low and slow, like I do prefer butter, but here you really need something with a high smoke point. We're going for speed. In she goes. So our turkey is in. It's gonna roast for about 40 minutes. Um, after 40 minutes, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna add a little bit of wine, a little bit of chicken stock and then we're gonna let that cook for about 40 minutes more. So we're looking at like an 80 minute all-in cook time, which is amazing considering it usually takes like four hours to roast a turkey. So our turkey has been roasting for about 40 minutes. I'm just adding a little bit of chicken stock to the bottom of the pan and a little bit of white wine to sort of bulk up our pan drippings for gravy. 
and this is going to go back in for about 40 minutes and I'm going to keep an eye. You can see we're already getting some really nice color here. I don't want it to get too brown. If it starts to get too brown, I'll just tent it with a little bit of tin foil. Our turkey is done. I'm just going to transfer it to a clean sheet pan um, and tent it and let it rest. And then I'm just going to pop our pan back in the oven. I just want to get more color and fawn for our gravy. So our turkey is out. Sarah Tain has graciously joined me to carve this baby up. How many more weeks of culinary school? Like four weeks. Four more weeks of culinary school. She's a pro at butchery. So the first thing we're going to do is take our turkey legs off. You're going to kind of follow this natural crease. I am using a boning knife because I find that like the little bit of flex it gives is helpful when you're dealing with joints. And I'm gonna give you this. You kind of like get the blade of your knife in there, find the joint and you just go right through it. I'll work on the other one. Okay. One wing. So I just popped the joint here and then you just go right through, get that wing. All right, so now we are to the breast, so we're gonna go right down the breastbone. And then I'm gonna get in there with the boning knife again and just sort of carve right along that bone. Okay, so I'm just gonna slice the breast across. Make sure you don't lose any of that delicious skin. So I usually just stick the whole knife on here and then just transfer it right to the serving platter. That's beautiful. Thanks. It's amazing. Thanks, Chef. Wow, wow, wow. So I'm gonna just carve the rest of this bird up and then we're gonna garnish our platter and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, our turkey is done. I have the whole crew here. Let's try it. Very What's your favorite part? The wing. The wing. The wing? Oh. Jake already took the first one. Oh, okay, from mom. What are you guys saying? So good. Really good. I love how crunchy the skin is. Yeah. That's, That's key. It's like yep. our brine. You can get the full recipe for this turkey on thefeedfeed.com. I hope that you all make it. Tag us. Show us what you made.